My name is Lindsay Lee Hobson and I work with organisations to elevate their emerging leaders and create the ultimate next generation of leadership. I'm also the founder of the Learning and Development Forum, where driven and passionate L&D professionals come together to exchange trending topics and innovative ideas and the best suppliers for the 2022 and 2023 calendars. And in a couple of weeks, we are hosting our second conference in the metaverse. And the purpose of this conference is to empower and equip L&D professionals to be the most impactful they possibly can be within their organisation. Which brings me to our incredible special guest in today's intro. Let me, in today's interview, let me introduce to you Sarah Canistra, who is the founder of The Overnight Trainer. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. I was so happy to have you because you're actually one of our speakers for the conference. And one of the things that I'm so excited about, we'll get into your topic in just a minute because I'm excited about that too. But one of the things I'm really excited about is what you actually do in your business. Could you make L&D careers come true? Is that right? How do you do that? How did you get into that? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's a story for another day. How to, how, to, how to actually get it done. But how I got into it was I've, I've been in the L&D space for the last uh, about 13, 14 years now. And I, I got in accidentally. Uh, one day I was a sales manager and I showed interest in wanting to join the training team. And literally the next day I became a systems trainer. So that's why my company is called The Overnight Trainer because I became a trainer overnight. I had no technical background in training whatsoever. Um, I didn't even have a college degree at the time, but here I was in a corporate training role. Um, so flash forward within that role, I grew, had really great mentors, ended up leading the learning and development department of that organization and went on to lead the, org uh, the learning and development department for four other organizations, startups, six-year-old companies, private, nonprofit, everything in between. And in, yeah, in 20, I'm trying to, the years have all meshed together now, but in the uh, end of 2020, I knew that I wanted to leave uh, my full-time role. I was working for a company that I wasn't aligned with and I knew I wanted to do more and I really wanted to help people. So I looked at the parts that I loved the most about my job in learning and development, and it really was helping develop other people in the next generation of L&D professionals. That's what I was doing as a head of L&D. I was really focusing a lot of my intention on my team. And so I thought, how could I take these skills that I have, someone who came into the industry knowing nothing and growing and being very successful in it, to also having been a hiring manager for almost, I guess, hundreds of people at, at this point. How can I take those two skills and mesh them together? And so the Overnight Trainer was born out of a love for helping people develop in their L&D careers. Oh, I love that so much. And I know a lot of our L&D forum members are sitting there going, yes, because it's such a relatable story. So many of them have found themselves in L&D overnight in so many different ways. Oh, yeah. Um, it's such a relatable thing. But your topic for the US L&D conference, it's one of the most powerful topics I think um, I've had in one of our conferences recently because it's about making yourself and your department recession proof. And with the way the world is and the way businesses are thinking at the moment, especially around l and I feel like that is so important for right now. But could you tell us a little bit about that from your from your own words and from your own experience? Yeah, so over, over the last you know decade of being in L&D, but especially in the last two years of of coaching not only people who are new to L&D, but I do executive coaching too. And what I've seen is that the people who develop a certain set of skills, which we'll talk about at the conference, uh, but a certain set of skills really end up making themselves recession proof. So they become so valuable to the organization that the organization couldn't fathom losing someone like that. You know, where L&D falls short often is we really can get stuck in the past. Um, actually just did a podcast episode around it's coming out ne next week. I don't know when this is airing, but uh, all around what l and needs to let go of. So that's a nice little preview to the session. But we, we hold on to so many traditional norms that have been around since the you know 1920s. And what I've noticed is from my clients, again, the ones that are transitioning into the field and the ones who are you know leading and growing in the field, when they develop a certain set of modern learning capabilities and, and competencies, they become not only recession proof, but they get that seat at the table. And once you have that seat at the table and you know to hold on to that seat at the table, again, the organization can't fathom losing someone like that. 
Uh, it's so important, no matter what industry you're in and what department you're in, but that's what businesses are going to be doing in the next 12 months, or the word mm -hmm. in the street is, um, especially in the L&D community, that are going to be looking at what's important and what's not important. And so for you and conference attendees and forum members as well who will be joining us at the conference, whether you're joining, um, starting your L&D career or whether you've been leading a department and doing this for ages, Sarah shared some of her insights with me just a little bit beforehand and oh my gosh, <laughs> Things that I didn't know I didn't know, it was mind blowing and you've been doing this for a good couple of years and you've been L &D for, in L&D for so long, it's so interesting to see your experiences and hear them. But one of the things I really love is your passion and your fire for this. L&D is such a passion point for you and I'd love to know a little bit more about that. Yeah, I've always loved teaching people and I, I never I never knew that L and D could be a career. And so when I look back at my career, even before I got into L and D or even before sales, my careers have always been around the idea of how do I help people. Mm -hmm. And I got into you know property management and real estate, helping people find their homes. And and I go back through all of these careers that I have, even you know, I don't you can call it a career, but even when in working uh, in college, I worked at a, a dog boutique uh, selling p dog food, like organic dog food. And I think back to all these moments and the jobs that I have and the careers that I have, and it's all around being able to educate people for the greater good, right? So even, even from a dog food perspective, right? We sold the best of the best dog food so people can have the longest amount of time with their pets, with their, with their animals. And so you know, even being able to, I know, right? <laughs> everyone, everyone has a little, little, little tear in their eye here, but, you know, being able to educate people, not just for the sake of educating, but for the sake of there being a greater purpose. And I think that's one of the things to, you know, a little, little sneak preview, but when we think about the, the skills that modern L&D really need to, to understand in order to be recession proof, it's that idea that there's, there's a greater good, right? It's not just learning to learn or teaching to teach, right? What's, what is the greater purpose of it too? So for me, it's, you know, I look, looked at all these things and, and I, I'm a very purpose-driven individual and I tend to attract very purpose-driven people into my, into my coaching and in, as my clients. And the one thing everyone has in common is the, the idea of Ed educating for a purpose and for something greater and bigger than ourselves. So that's really where the passion came from. And I never knew L and D could even be a, be a, a field. Didn't even know it existed until I sat in one of my companies. I sat in a training session and I looked at the facilitator and I thought, Oh my gosh, this is this is her full time job. Like she actually is getting paid to teach people. Like. I've been doing this for forever, you know, for many years. Um, and then, yeah, like I said earlier, after the, it was a two day leadership session. And afterwards I went up to her and the director of training at the time and said, how do I do this? And then I said, do you want to be a systems trainer? And I said, sure. And that's how I became a trainer. So yeah, all, all around the, there's a, a bigger purpose to why we educate people. And uh, that's my, that's why I'm so passionate about it. It's a, a butterfly effect for sure. Absolutely. And it's the reason so many L&D professionals get out of bed in the morning, especially during COVID, it's because they know they can make a difference to someone's life. Yeah, it's so impactful. It really is. And then on the other side of it, they're also really results driven and they're looking for quantifiable sort of information, which fits in with the company, but sometimes it's tricky to know, you know, what it is you need to tell them. But for you, you know, what is it that um, resources or technical skills do you believe that your L&D professionals or do you empower your L&D professionals to have? And you don't have to go into too much detail if you're going to share more in the conference. Um, but just a little insight into that as well would be amazing for those who prefer that sort of information. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it it sounds so simple, but it's so forgotten of to take a, a human-centered approach, right? A human-first approach that we are adults educating other adults. And I think there's so... What I see so often, and I think this comes from, um, and I would say probably I'll, I'll speak on behalf of the United States, but the education education system in the United States, right? It's so ingrained of like teacher student, teacher knows best, student sits, and same thing as you move into and, and move through you know university and and onwards, and then it we still repeat that inside of the workplace of you know L and D is this gatekeeper and they know best, and you know the reality is we don't know best, you know, they are our learners know best. And so really being able to hone in on what our learners need and and looking at them as 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 the client. And I think what happens is 
you know, we as L and D focus so much on ourselves and what we think is best, um, and then we think about the organization, and then we think about the learner last. When really it's a trifecta that we have to focus on. But I think the most important is to what's best for the learner is going to be best for L and D, and it's going to be best for the organization. So just a different way of looking at it. And my most successful clients prioritize you know the human experience that we're. We're all humans living on this planet, having a human experience. And that's something to really, really take into effect when we're designing any type of learning experience. 100%. I think I just need to lift my jaw off the floor, especially when you're saying quick <laughs> the first. Because it seems something so simple, and yet it's something that is so easy to overlook in the busyness. And, you know, you've got the pressures from the top down and from other stakeholders. Sometimes it can be really tricky, but just keeping that front of mind is going to make such a big difference to so many people. So that's incredible. But do you know what? It's your first time facilitating in the metaverse. Is that right? I know. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> It's, very it's my first time really being in the metaverse, you know, you you gave me a little preview, but uh... <laughs> Well, welcome, welcome. When we did our second, our first conference, a lot of our facilitators, it was their first time. A lot of our attendees, it was their first time. Um, and for a lot of our attendees this time around as well, actually, it's going to be their first time because we've got a really good mix of people who haven't been to one of our conferences before and forum members um, and evolution members as well from the past conference. So what are you looking forward to or what are you, what's on your mind when it comes to your first time facilitating in the metaverse? I'm so excited. I mean, low key, a little bit nervous, but you know, I'm like, oh, I feel like a grandma in here. I'm like, I don't know how to, how do I move around? But I, I, I trust in my technical capabilities that I'll be able to figure it out. But I, I'm so excited because it's the future. It's the future, and the future is here, right? So I think we, we people think about the metaverse. People think about all of this technology as something that's down the road, but we are down the road. We, we, we are there. We have arrived. So I think it's really important. The more that we can get learning and development professionals inside of spaces like this, even as attendees, mm -hmm. right? To realize, oh, wow, the power that this has. And so I'm really kind of going back to what I was saying about the butterfly effect. I'm really excited about seeing people, especially if it's their first time, like it is mine, right? Then thinking about how can I now utilize a platform as great as this mm -hmm. in my organization, in my workplace. Yeah, absolutely. And so we've partnered with Topia, who's the metaverse company we're using for it. And we use that for the last conference as well. And they make it so easy. Um, in fact, yeah. for the last conference was over, I think it was over three quarters of participants found it completely intuitive, even if a little difficult at the beginning, but by the end of it, completely intuitive. They just got the hang of it. It's such a great platform for people who haven't been on it before and people who just want to create something that's got all the agency of the metaverse, but also all the engagement factor and all the fun without being distracted by the difficulties that can pop up when we're looking at technology. So really excited for you to be a facilitator for us and a speaker for us in this conference, especially we've got Topia on board. So thank you so much Sarah and a big thank you to all of our speakers and sponsors for this conference as well if you haven't registered yet there is still time so look around this video somewhere and you will find a link to be able to join the conference and a little bit more information as well to be able to attend and on Sarah's topic too and on Sarah as well as an incredible overnight trainer which I think is the best name ever too by the way it's so thank you. <laughs> But thank you once again, Sarah. Thank you everyone who's been watching and we hope you see you at the conference.